Good evening, everyone. This is Joe Henches with Beyond the Chart, and this is Stock Market Analysis for today. Today is Wednesday, June 18th, 2014, and this is our Wednesday night uh, brick countries. We're going to take a look at the Dow, the markets in the U.S., but then we're going to look at Brazil, Russia, India, China, and we're going to look at four Chinese stocks, Yoku, YY, Chihu, and Citrep. Okay, the Dow was up 98 points today, so it continued to push higher. It got above this congestion in here and uh, above this trading range of last Thursday. So now, what does this mean? Now, the, it, this could be what I talked about before. This could be what's developing is a little bit of an M top. Okay, and then it does this. But, you know, it's got to, that's what's got to develop. And um, I'm just laying that out as a possibility, okay? I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but I'm kind of watching for that a little bit, given that we had this slight breakdown in here below the, the 10, kind of like back here in early January, we had the breakdown below the 10, and we rallied back up for a couple days, went sideways, and then rolled over. So that's what i'm cautiously watching is is a scenario like we had back here in january uh, when you look at the s p 500 it closed at a new all-time high i believe today 1956.93 again it's um it's up above the channel in here it really hasn't pulled down in here hard enough uh yet you know we are getting i think some divergences that are showing up. The indicators have not gone to new highs with this with this little push. So um, we'll see if that continues or if it rolls over. Now sometimes it goes away if it continues to push to the to the high side. Uh, the Nasdaq, uh, the Nasdaq had another uh, 52 week high, I believe, in terms of close, not intraday, but on the close. And also it's the highest since again back to like March, April 2000 uh, of 2000. So we're talking about 14-year um, highs in here on the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ has clawed its way back from this dramatic sell-off of March and April when all the Momo stocks were getting killed. Now we're drawing, you know, it's, it's clawing its way back in here. And um, you've, got, you've got to ride the trend. I mean, you've got to say, until this change changes, the trend is up. I mean, right now, short-term trend's up. And honestly, all the moving averages are aligned. The 55 is above the 233, the 21's above the 55, and the 10's above the 21. So right now, you got to say NASDAQ saying, you know, green light, go. And a little bit of divergence coming in, a little bit of divergence coming in. So we're just going to have to watch to see if that, further develops and again you, you know it's got to roll over and close below the 10 it's got to you know do this kind of rollover action uh, before you can sit back and say okay it's it's going south right now it's it's riding to the high side okay that's the uh, three stocks I wanted to look at I'm gonna look at the short-term trading index real quick it is pulled down some <clears throat> so we're getting because of the bullish action naturally um, we're getting uh, more bullish readings in here, which, you know, becomes contrary, becomes a, a bearish signal when it gets bullish enough. And right now it's at 0.93, which is what the reading was on June 4th. And we need it to get down below 0.9 and for an ex starting to get an extreme reading on it. And then we're talking about the 10 day exponential moving average of it. OK, the VIX. It went in the tank today. So the VIX dramatically dropped to a new low. And, you know, I'm almost getting weary of going back and looking. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> so, you know, how low is it? I know that back in 2006, and there was a couple periods where they had extended times where the, the VIX was down very low like this, you know. So, you know, maybe we're entering another one of those times right now. But um, uh, this looks like divergence to me, bullish divergence. But again, I've got to get it to turn up to signal that this is truly a point, kind of like here. It's got to form a turn to confirm that. So this has got to come off of this and rise uh, because it could continue to go down a little bit further and then continue to break and maybe come lower than this point. So 
Right now, it's developing as a potential bullish divergence on the VIX. High low index, it went up again today. Uh, so, you know, we're having a riding a little bit of rise in here, but we're right stuck in the middle again. We're not, there's no extreme signals. There's no sign of anything new developing. We just can't seem that, you know, it, it, it's staying strong. It's staying above the zero line. Uh, it's not getting super strong like back in here and up in here. It had the one move. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it continues to develop. I mean, it's uh, the market's going to do what the market's going to do. Okay, so those, those are what we wanted to look at tonight. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, let's go ahead and jump and look at Brazil. Look at the countries. Brazil, Russia, India, and China. So Brazil, um, last week was the 11th. Last Wednesday was here. So here we were Wednesday. It broke above that point. It's pulled back a little bit and then it had a nice big move today. So it's trying to continue this, this upward movement up through this trend line. And remember, this is pretty solid, pretty big trend line break in here. Um, so it's uh, still looking pretty bullish in terms of what it's, what it's doing. Um, my sex index. Since last Wednesday, I'm missing a couple of days. So I'm kind of thinking maybe maybe they had a couple of holidays Thursday, Friday last week. I, I don't remember. I don't watch this. I don't look at it on a daily basis. I look at it every, you know, once a week. So we've only got three data points since last Wednesday here. <clears throat> and um, it's, you know, it's it hasn't rolled over again. It's just, but it's stalled out right up in here in the top of this congestion. So we'll, it's uh, again, had a pretty big comeback and uh, it, you know, it hasn't closed below the blue line yet. Hasn't closed below the 10. So Russia's pushing, Brazil's pushing, Russia's pushing. And where is India? Here we go. India, it, again, is pushing to the high side too. It's like all the markets are are going higher except for Shanghai which we'll talk about in a minute although it's trying this one here I think uh, based on what I'm seeing and I talked about this we're in a third wave and um, we're in a we're actually in a fifth of a third wave okay and so when I looked at this one two three four I think at a minimum this fifth wave is going to come up here to about eight eighty fifty and on the nifty 50 and um, <clears throat> if it pushes above that i think it's going to get above 8600 okay so i'm thinking either the 38 percent or the 61.8 percent so what we do when i look to see number one i measured how did wave three the little i3 compared to little i1 okay and it went slightly beyond 161.8 percent so then i take the fibonacci projections and i go from here to the top of three so from zero basically at the beginning of the third wave to the top of little i3 bring it down to the bottom of little i4 and then we look at targets of 38 percent and 61.8 percent as potential endings for wave five in here so that's what we're looking at on india and uh then the last one is shanghai composite <clears throat> And it's had a little bit of a move. Last Wednesday, we were sitting here, right here. And it's had a couple of day a pop, a couple of day pullback. And so it's trying, getting the moving averages going up a little bit. Uh, but again, it's it needs to break out of this, this congestion, even when you look on a weekly basis. I mean, you can just see how, how tight this whole wedge is in here. Um, it's just, it, right now, it's just, it's still basically, you can almost say it's just weaving up and down sideways for the last one, two, three, four, five months kind of thing. So um, we need to have a breakout for this to go anywhere. Okay, that's it on um, the BRIC countries. We looked at the indicators. Now we're going to go ahead and look at um, C-Trip, Chihu 360, Yoku, and why why all right C trip is really pushing <clears throat> in here it's uh, I think in a third wave 
Actually, I think it's in a three of a three, which to me, when, when you have a three of a three, that's usually the strongest move wave. So um, I should have gotten in right in here, actually. Th that was a mistake to miss out. I have a feeling this is going to continue pushing. Um, so when I look at this, let's look at wave one. And I come back down to the bottom of wave two. <clears throat> Wave three will equal wave one up here at 65, okay? And a lot of times it's considered to be normal that it'll go to 161.8% of wave one. So, so for wave three to have a normal wave three and not even be considered to be extended, quote unquote extended, we're talking about being up here at 70, almost 78, okay? So I'm thinking that C-TRIP, has got the potential to move between 65 to 78. So at a minimum, I'm thinking 65. And realistically, I think it's got a good chance at 68, at 78. So now we just, you know, we got to watch the waves uh, as they develop in here. Because um, this could be five. You know, it's, I, again, I'd have to look at it. And um, I haven't looked at that closely enough. Because if this is the start of wave three, then you're gonna get you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get a one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna get five waves. Okay. This doesn't look like we've had a wave two pullback yet. So it's possible that we could get kind of because typically wave twos are a little more sharper of a pullback. Okay. They're usually um, and then wave fours are typically shallower. OK, and that's just kind of a rule of thumb. It doesn't always play out that way, but it's like a guideline. All right. So that's on C trip. So right now I'll just be waiting and looking. I'm not going to just dive in right now because it could pull back uh, in, into a wave two uh, in here. Um, and the next one we're going to take a look at is uh, Chihu 360. And this one today, I did put out a trade idea on this. Um, I, I just saw it when I happened to be looking at the market in the first hour this morning and just saw what was happening. And I thought, OK, this just looks, uh, you know, like it's going to go. And the only reservation I've got about uh, Chihu 360 is I'm not sure that it's corrected enough in the big picture because I think this is one, two, and this two almost went below one, but it didn't. OK, so it's a valid wave two that retraced almost 100 percent of wave one, but it did not go below this point. So that's why it's a valid two. And then three, four, shallow four sideways. This was a sharp pullback two. OK, then you had an extended wave five in this three. So you had one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm expecting that this to pull back uh, and it's only pulled back like 40, 45 percent. So it's possible that what we're getting in here is uh, maybe a little bit of an A, B, C that we're going to get a get a bounce up here. Uh, and then we roll over again and go down further. But right now I'm going to take the fact that we're getting these closes above the 10. Um, and uh, I do have the details. I'm pretty sure I have the details of, on the trade ideas page. If I don't, <laughs> as of right now, I will. Uh, late, later this evening. So I'll double check that and make sure we got that out there. OK, so right now we're looking at uh, at being long on Chihu 360 and see if we can't ride a little wave. And the next one is uh, Yoku. And Yoku's another one that uh, I think we're ready uh, to get in on. And again, it's because we've gotten the 10 crossing over the 21 down here. Um, it, getting this, you know, had this big reversal bar, pulled back, got a big move, it's pulled back, and now we're getting this close above the 10. I like this kind of action in here. So I'm going to be looking for an entry slightly above the close today, slightly above today's high to get in. And I know we've got this kind of counter. It's going to be a little bit of a counter, but this is how the, ten, the trends start to turn. Um, you, you're not getting... The only you know caveat, not getting strong divergence, some divergence uh, on this move down into here. Um, 
but I'm going to go with the I'm going to go with the moving averages on this one, and then we'll just uh, see how it plays out. We've just seen too many of these recently start to just turn and go. So I think you know it's had a heck of a move, and now we're getting a you know the moving averages crossing, kind of like in here. I mean, you, you get across, yeah, it pulled back, and but then it wants to go. So we got the cross, it pulled back, I think it wants to go. All right, so and the last one we're going to look at is YY. Uh, YY. Okay, YY has also had a big move. And um, this is the move since the start trading back in 2012. I think we've had five waves up. I think this is a, a, um, a, a major wave one. And um, I think we got a wave two pullback. It's just about 50% though. Um, but <clears throat> that's good enough. I mean, we're looking for usually 50 to 61.8% or more. And that's, that's uh, we got the 50% retracement in here, right down to the 233 day moving average. Now it looks like we got five waves. I'm, I'm thinking we got five little waves in here. So I'm looking for a way to get into this. I'm not just gonna buy right here. Okay, um, so we'll watch for a pullback on this. Uh, this could be starting another wave three, but this could be wave one of wave three and you get a wave two pullback of some kind and then and then it goes. So, um, I mean, you just you never know what the wave, how the wave is going to shape, you know, uh, shake out. So you just have to kind of watch the wave count that you're getting. This looks like little you know, minor waves, one, two three, four, and a five. So I'm thinking this could be a little five wave move in here that would mean a pullback wave two that we'd be watching to try to get on board. So, all right, that's it for tonight. Um, those are the uh, the four Chinese stocks we wanted to look at. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night with uh, another market update, see what happens tomorrow. Uh, oh, and by the way, on the, um, the video analysis uh, coaching that I announced a week ago tonight, just wanted to let you know, we do have a few more slots available. Um, think about it. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with you. So I would look at it from an education standpoint. Uh, and, you know, it's ability for me to talk to you, talk about when I'm doing something and I'm drawing something or I'm calculating something. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking and why I'm doing it. Uh, so uh, that's the whole point behind it. So uh, opt in and, uh, and buy some credits and uh, go from there. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a subscriber. This has been Joe for Beyond the Chart.